Hello everyone, my name is Aditya Kamoju and I'm a second year architectural engineering student at Penn State University. I'm here today to give you a presentation on fractal geometry and the impact it has on architecture. Before we get started, uh, this is my textbook that I used for my independent study with uh, Dr. Samantha Pezzamenti. Um, it's called Fractal Geometry and Architecture and Design, written by Carl Beauville. Um, if you're interested in anything I'm talking about today, I'd definitely give this book a shot. It's a good read. It's very detailed. And I, um, I think you really like it. I'm assuming all you genius mathematicians have definitely heard of fractals. However, um, I'm just going to give a uh, do a quick recap, uh, dust up some of those cobwebs and all that. Fractals are mathematical shapes that are made up of never-ending patterns. A term which is commonly incorporated fractals is self-similarity. Self-similarity was proposed by Mandelbrot in 1975, where he stated that any curve or you know surface independent of its scale follows the rule of self-similarity and therefore is classified as a fractal. Some obvious and uh, famous fractals that uh, you guys probably know are the Sierpinski Triangle, also referred to as Sierpinski Gasket, um, the Coke Curve right here, and then the Cantor Set up here. So we also know that fractals are very common outside of the math world and can be found in nature quite often. However, the use and study of fractals are also pretty typical. Music and sounds that resonate can form almost perfect fractal formations, and in biology, DNA along with other biological matters are also fractals as well. We also know that fractals are on the more artistic side of math, so evidently it'll be a, a lot of artistic depictions such as paintings and drawings. Computer-aided design software, also known as CAD software, also relies on a triangulated fractal pattern that then changes into a file that the 3D printer can read and print exactly what you want. And lastly, architecture, which I'll elaborate on in the uh, upcoming slide and throughout the presentation. Fractal patterns and their relationship with the architecture is actually super common. The idea of repeated patterns which are mathematically perfect are proven to be pleasant and comforting to the eye, which bring people into a building and experience its architecture, which is exactly what an architect is always looking for. They want people to appreciate their work. It also provides as a quantifiable calculation tool to provide order and surprise at the same time. Uh, fractal dimensioning can be used to calculate architectural fractal patterns, as well as minute details in a building as you keep approaching it closer and closer. As I've mentioned before, the relationship between fractals and architecture has been around for a while. Uh, specifically, it peaked in the pre and post modernism style era. So these are really good examples um, of fractals and its relationship with architecture. And the first one I want to point out is this ancient African settlement called uh, Ba'ila, and it's uh, practiced extended family systems with the head and elder family in the middle right here. And as the younger families uh, of age are in the more outskirts of the circle and more uh, farther away, the older families are in the center right here. Another example is a South Indian temple that follows a seventh century Dravida style where um, it's a curved pyramid and extrusions of different patterns, um, or sorry, same patterns rise up uh, throughout each facade. And as they keep going up and up, they get bigger and bigger. And evidently, as you keep going down and down, they keep going smaller and smaller. The European cultures also did a really good job of incorporating fractals uh, throughout their cathedrals. This specific uh, cathedral right here is Notre Dame. And uh, their arches right here is as you keep coming out, the arches get bigger and bigger. And these spires that you can see right here is that as the spires keep going up, their pattern gets smaller and smaller. Uh, fractal dimensioning, as I mentioned before, is quite uh, a good way to quantify minute details in architecture. It's also a, also a good way to quantify um, fractals themselves. Uh, fractal dimension is a measure of how quickly a curve approaches infinity. And visually speaking, the fractal dimension is a measure of how much texture a line represents. As shown on your right, the fractal dimension of the Cantor set right here is 0 0.63. As you can tell, this line is pretty smooth and straight. However, the Coke curve right here, the fractal dimension is 1.26. And 1.26 is higher than 0 0.63, obviously. And the curve is, has a lot more texture and it's um, rougher. Uh, fractal dimension in architecture is a way to test and see how much minute detail a building has as you approach it closer um, throughout the use of fractal dimensioning. To do so, there's a simple method called the box and grid method in which you create a grid on an elevation view of a box 
or sorry, building, and count the number of boxes in which the building is filled. After doing so, double the grid size and repeat the process. Because you can technically go on for infinity, it is important to choose a sequence of grids where the ratio converges to the fractal dimension, and the way to find that ratio is using this formula right here, which is the log of the second box count minus the first box count, divided by the log of the total number of uh, boxes in a certain grid minus the total number of boxes in the first grid. And obviously these twos and ones can be threes and twos or fours and threes and keep going on forever and ever. A good way to um, mention how much detail a, a building has in its facade is to uh, notice that as a fractal dimension increases, that means the detail in that facade also increases as well. And the usually fractal dimensions range from zero to two. So this is a, an example that I did with Penn State's beloved old main building. And on the left is a famous house called the Roby House. And um, uh, so what I did was I have a 12 by six grid right here and I filled in all the boxes where they're just open spaces without the building enclosed in them. And then I counted about 48 boxes up here. Then I doubled the grid, which would end up being uh, 24 by 12 here. And now I counted 103 boxes over here. So after using the um, previous equation that I just mentioned, I was able to get a fractal dimension of 0 0.825, um, which is a lot lower than the fractal dimension of this house, which is 1.481. So it's telling me right now that the old main building does not have much detail at where I'm standing. However, this is subject to change because if I was approached closer and closer, there'd be more detail and more boxes with um, the building filled in it. So uh, my ratio would increase and I'd be have an average ratio, which is probably higher than what it is right now. So I have a couple of concepts and designs that uh, I wanted to take upon myself to um, do and incorporate fractals. I was looking for more the building itself being a fractal instead of adding components or adding extrusions that are just fractal patterns. Um, so yeah, this is, these are a couple of uh, sketches that I have, a little bit of math, some stuff I obviously don't like, and then a 3D rendering right here. So the breakdown of my design is basically, I have an octagon which is 600 feet wide and 600 feet tall. And um, I took both these dimensions and I multiplied them by two thirds. And I just kept going until I had about um, seven or eight or even eight or nine buildings uh, all lined across. And I did the same thing with the height as well. And afterwards, what I did was I took um, the first building that you see right here, and then I placed the second building after shrinking it by two thirds on half of this facade right here. After doing so, if I were to take this, shrink it to two thirds and rotate it 90 degrees, that's exactly where my third building would be placed. And just repeat this entire process until I get this slight curve that's gonna follow. And I also 3D printed a model um, that I wanted to show during the Epidel conference, but obviously that didn't happen. So I just took a couple of pictures of them to give you a good idea of what curve I was talking about, see everything from up top, and also just an elevation view right here. So what's next? Um, I'm working on the final rendering of my design. I wanna make it more realistic, see how it would, uh, fit in, you know, like an actual landscape. And then I wanna also know other ways to incorporate fractal patterns across different types of facades of the building. Um, like my building, I wanna be able to see if there are other ways that I can include fractals instead of just components, um, maybe have a whole fractal pattern as a building. And I also wanna do more research into and study upon uh, fractal dimensions in a more 3D view to see if I can test the entire building uh, and its fractal dimension instead of just a certain elevation view or its facade. Thank you for watching.